in the replay of this or the video on demand, uh, welcome. Thanks for following me. Thanks for watching the video. If you're live with us on uh, Twitch today, I'm going to be doing actually a dual stream. I'm streaming live to my channel here on Twitch. And in just a moment, I'm going to start a live broadcast on Periscope as well. So if you hear me answering questions that you don't see in the chat, or if you're watching video on demand, which you don't get a chat, uh, I'll try and repeat the questions whenever I can. So that way you won't say, well, why did he just say that random thing out of the blue uh, when I was answering a question that I read that you actually didn't see? Uh, so my name is Terry White. I'm the Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. Uh, tonight, we're going to take a look, first look at the iPad Pro with Apple Pencil for doing some portrait retouching. As a matter of fact, let me go back a step. Uh, just I know you can't see it, but I want to go back to where we can launch the app and start from scratch. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and start that Periscope broadcast. So uh, thanks for joining me. Hey, Victoria, how's it going? And I got to look up at, at two different chats going on, too. That's going to be interesting. All right. Hey, what's up, Periscope? If you're watching the replay, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. I uh, do periscopes on technology, um, gadgets, periscope tips and tricks, and scope gear, as well as Adobe. Uh, if you're joining live, thanks for joining me live. Uh, we're going to get started by taking a first look at the uh, iPad Pro and Apple Pencil. It is Thursday, as I promised last week. Uh, should have had my Apple Pencil by now, which I do, and we'll take a look at it. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, Victoria. Thanks for the person before Trevor for sharing your followers on, or sharing with your followers and tweeting as well. And of course, on Periscope, thanks for the hearts. Uh, guys, I am doing a dual broadcast, so you'll see me kind of look around between two different devices, uh, and I'm doing a dual broadcast this time on Periscope and... Uh, Twitch on my Twitch channel. Uh, so is this what is this? Um, big Ant Dog. Hey, Big Ant Dog. How's it going? That's on uh, Twitch. And woohoo! Yep, we're about to kick things off in just a moment here. So we'll give people a couple more seconds to get in the room. Uh, hello, Jess uh, Makeup. How's it going? Good evening. Uh, greetings from uh, Greetings Costa Rica. Hey, Becker Biz. Thanks for being here. And thanks for the scope you did earlier. That was probably one of your shortest scopes I've ever seen you do. You stuck to your timing. Uh, but thanks for inviting your followers. Thanks, Jess Makeup, for inviting your followers as well. Um, hey, Katie, how's it going? Hey, Trent, how's it going? Will I remove the lines <laughs> lips with the Apple Pencils? The running joke. I will not today. I will not do that. Uh, Barry Kane Photo, thanks for inviting your followers. And uh, just checking the Twitch stream too to make sure I'm not missing anything over here. Got a couple of people watching on Twitch. Um, most of the time when I'm doing Twitch, I'm doing it from the Adobe channel. Uh, so I don't do a lot of Twitch broadcast uh, on my own channel. But the, tonight I decided to try this and do this uh, dual broadcast. So what you're seeing down below there is actually a lower third uh, in the Twitch software. So I have my iPhone pointed at my computer screen, which is running the streaming software for uh, Twitch. So that's how the magic is happening that you don't normally see on Periscope. Also, I've got green screen going on. So I'm in Arizona in the desert. Uh, so we get to have some fun with that as well. Um, yeah, this is a cool way and you'll see in a moment what makes it even cooler is being able to do multiple uh, screens. Oh, so if you, this is your first scope, uh, first scope ever, or my first scope, well, either way, welcome. Uh, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe by Day, uh, tech scoper, gadget guy, photographer, uh, tips and tricks guy, uh, Lightroom guy <laughs> uh, by night. Uh, we won't get into Lightroom too much today. Uh, I will show it at the end if you want to stick around, and I'll uh, show it if you remind me when we're done with the retouching. Uh, but it's really not pencil enabled, so there's not a whole lot uh, that we would do with the pencil. But I, I can show you Lightroom Mobile on it as well. Um, with that said, it looks like we have a quorum on both uh, Twitch and Periscope. 
So I'm going to turn my attention a little bit this way. I'm going to face away from you, but that's okay. Because uh, you're not really here to see me as much as you are here to see what I'm about to show you. So we're going to switch setups here. And this way you get a chance to see um, what I'm doing on the uh, iPad, which is the big screen. And of course, uh, you'll get to see my hands and gestures that way as well uh, with what I'm doing here. I know I've got a cool setup for Periscope. This is one thing you've never seen on Periscope, I guarantee it. Because uh, I'm the only one crazy enough to get all this set up. Uh, what is my channel on Twitch? It is twitch.tv slash Terry L. White. Uh, someone can type that in the comments for me. Um, I didn't see that, but show something on the iPad with an LOL, so that looked like a joke. Okay, so I've got my iPad Pro here. I can pick it up for those of you watching it on that camera. I've got it connected to my Mac uh, via the lightning cable so that I can mirror it the way I'm doing it here. Um, yep, that's my Twitch channel. And um, I've got my Apple Pencil, which came in actually yesterday. I uh, just didn't have time to do anything with it on, on live streaming. And uh, so the app we're going to spend our time in today is uh, Adobe Photoshop Fix. So by the way, all of these Adobe apps, everything we see here is a free app from the App Store. It's a free download. So there is, um, there is uh, no cost to, to using or playing around with any of these apps. You, the only cost is you do have to set up an Adobe ID, and a, an Adobe ID is free to set up. It's just really creating an, an ID for Adobe that you can log into the apps with. Outside of that, there is no cost. So the cost of giving up a little bit of personal information like your email address. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and launch Fix. Um, first thing you'll notice with the iPad Pro is speed. It's very, very, very fast compared to any previous iPad. Um, the rumor is it has four gigs of operating RAM, which is usually double what an iPad has, and sometimes quadruple what the previous iPads had. Uh, so the apps are faster. Of course, it's got a new faster processor in it. And um, I have some projects here that I can play around with and retouch. Matter of fact, uh, we'll play around with this one as well. We'll do some liquify on that. Uh, but what I really want to do is get into some portrait retouching. Now, this image that I have on the left-hand side, this guy is kind of looking tough, looking mean. Uh, this is actually a stock uh, image. Thanks, Victoria. I love Fix, too. And by the way, if you if Periscope, if you hear me making comments and you're like, I didn't see that comment, what is he referring to? I'm addressing the comment on this screen uh, on, um, on Twitch. Same thing, Twitch folks, if you hear me talking to the Periscope folks, I'm talking to Periscope folks. If it's a question, I'll try to remember to, um, to repeat it. All right, so with that said, uh, you can import your images from all your various sources. So I could get it from the iPad. I can take a picture with the iPad. I can get it from my Creative Cloud folder. I can even bring in my Lightroom photos directly and work on them. Um, how do you see this on Twitch? You go to twitch.tv slash Terry L. White. Um, can I do it live on YouTube too? I could, but I'm not set up to do it live on YouTube. That was a Twitch question, by the way. Uh, I'm not set up to do it right now, so can't do it live on YouTube in this setting. Uh, so I can bring in images from Lightroom, uh, Facebook, and Dropbox. Um, so why am I not doing Facebook mentions too? Because it, the device that I would need to plug in just won't fit in the setup. That's the only reason I didn't do it on Facebook. But I will do something for the Facebook page as well. Uh, I'll maybe repeat it and do it directly on Facebook. Normally I would go ahead and set up a triple broadcast, but the other reason is it's hard enough managing comments from one, two, let alone three. So uh, <laughs> thanks, Larry. But that's the only reason, uh, two reasons why I didn't do it on Facebook is the space constraint that I'm working with right now with my setup and having to manage comments in three places while I work. Um, but you know, I don't know. I might try that someday when I've had a little bit more caffeine. All right, let's go in and... Uh, I'm going to cancel that because I've already got the image imported that I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and open this guy up. And once he opens up, he opens up in the editing environment for fix. Uh, so at this point, I can zoom in and uh, pinch and zoom. And what's cool is I can really zoom in 
to a great detail in this app. Uh, and it's really cool to be able to work at such a large, um, it, with a large um, zoomed in view. Uh, so it's really cool to be able to do this, pan around, move around with the speed that I'm working. Now, of course, uh, I chose a stock image that has lots of things for us to retouch. Uh, <laughs> this guy's got a lot of blemishes. Um, and we don't know him. He's a stock guy, so we can talk about his blemishes. He's not someone that we know. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch over to the healing brush. And that takes me into the healing brush environment in the app. So at this point, I can go in and make my brush bigger or smaller uh, just by going up or down on the brush. I could also choose the hardness or softness um, here. And I believe this is palm rejection. I can't not remember what that is, but I think it's palm rejection. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just start uh, healing some of this away. And the thing I love about the Apple Pencil, I've only had it for like 24 hours, maybe 36 hours, is number one, the precision. Uh, it's a fine, here we'll put this on the camera, it's a fine point, and all of this is fair game. So it's not just the tip, it's also the sides as well. So even if you're doing sketching, where, hang on, let's see, are you guys seeing that? There we go. Even if you're doing sketching where you're laying the, pix the pen pencil down sideways, you can uh, do that as well. So uh, again, very quick. I'm not going to retouch the whole photo. I mean, one, once you see one blemish removed, imagine it 500 more times and you would have the image uh, retouched. And of course, we can do bigger strokes and remove some of the lines or wrinkles. And again, this is retouching in Adobe Photoshop Fix on iPad Pro with Apple Pencil. The Apple Pencil. All right, that's the French version. So, as a matter of fact, uh, on this particular image, normally when I show it, I've only shown it like privately, I'll retouch like one side of his face so we can like see the before and after. So we'll do the left side, we won't do the right side. We'll treat him poorly because we don't know. Him. And by the way, his photographer or he submitted his image to stock so it's fair game okay next we can go down here and again we could take off some of this and again I could you know keep doing this all day long you get the idea it is basically the spot healing tool that you're used to in um, in Photoshop CC on the desktop and it does a fantastic job here in Photoshop uh, <laughs> Wacom is crying now, I can hear it. Uh, Wacom's got a pretty strong business. I don't think they're going to lose out too much to this. Um, but between now and my next scope, I'm going to show you guys something called AstroPad, which allows me to connect the iPad Pro up to my Mac and use this as the tablet. So AstroPad Pro. Uh, is that that's big? That's more of a threat to the to the Wacom Cintiq than anything else, especially now with the precision of this. Uh, so yeah, it, it it's a it's a def it's a solution for people that didn't want to pony up for a Cintiq. They would not you know they wouldn't want to spend two thousand dollars, but they would spend a thousand bucks for an iPad Pro and be able to use it as their tablet on their desktop as well. All right, so you got the idea there. Um, again, I can, for example, do it here. Let's zoom out a little bit. We can do a before. That's the before. That's the after. So before and after. Uh, how is the pin lag? There is no pin lag. That's the beauty of it. There is no lag whatsoever. And when people ask the question, uh, why, don't, why doesn't this work with the previous iPads? It's because this pencil was designed to work with this display. And it captures 240 scans per second. So there is zero lag. 240 scans per second. The uh, pencil is $99. Uh, and again, it's $99, but it only works with the iPad Pro. So if you're thinking about, hey, I could use that on my iPad Air or my iPad Air 2 or anything like that, uh, you can't. Just like I can't take my Cintiq pen and use it on my any other tablet or my screen. It only works with the Cintiq. This only works with the iPad Pro. 
So pin technology isn't just in the pin, it's also in the display. So without having the comparable technology in the display, this does you no good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and accept the changes I've made to, um, to the image uh, for the healing. Uh, what I want to do now is, and Larry Becker is on, on, the, uh, on the scope today, he talks a lot about uh, lighting, and as you can see the lighting here, it looks pretty good on your screen, it actually looks pretty good on my screen, but it looks okay on your screen, but notice his eye sockets are really dark, and what I want to do is just simply lighten up that area. Uh, so I can just hit light, and that takes me into that editing mode, and again, I have the same choices, I can make my brush bigger or smaller. I can increase the hardness, opacity, and again, we're doing the left side, uh, so we'll just throw a little light in that eye socket. And there we are. And again, it's really hard to see it on the Periscope screen. My Twitch folks should be able to see that. Uh, but again, that's the before, and that's the after. So I'm looking at it on Periscope. It looks a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, tap OK. Oh, actually, I don't have to tap OK because it builds up in layers. So I can keep lightening that eye with each stroke. Every time I do it, it does it a little bit more. If I do it some more, it's doing it some more. So now I'm really starting to see it on my phone. So that means you guys should start to see it on the scope. Oh, you can see it on the scope. Cool. Uh, so that's the before. Now you can really see the difference. That's the after. And I might have exaggerated it for the scope, but you guys can see it. Uh, so before and after so again uh, these these changes now if I went too far like too far down and I didn't like that uh, then I could go in for example and hit restore and I could just simply restore the darkness in a particular spot like if I wanted to line under his eye then I can go ahead and restore that so again before after before after okay so um, uh, we'll tap OK on that. We'll accept those changes. And again, we can pinch and zoom, get them where we want them to be. And next thing we want to do is, I notice he's got these, I don't know, are those muscles or those cheekbones or cheek lines or whatever that is that's kind of sticking out from the side of his face. And we want to reduce that just a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll go into Liquify and uh, just check in here and make sure I don't have any questions on Twitch I'm missing. Um, yep, there we go. And um, and if Liquify can identify the face, it will. It, they're handsome muscles. Okay, well, we're going to reduce his muscles ever so slightly. Uh, it will do face detection. In this case, it didn't. But that's okay. I don't need face detection for what I'm doing. I'm just going to go ahead now and just, again, we'll just push that in just a little bit. Uh, we don't want him to look like he has got the mumps. We want it muscly, but not mumpy. If mumpy is a word. All right, so there we are, just liquefying that in just a little bit. Same thing on the ears. We'll just tuck those in. And again, if I make my brush smaller, which I can still use my finger, I don't have to use the pencil for everything, uh, we can go ahead and, oops, sorry. I tapped OK on that when I wasn't supposed to, sorry. We'll go back to that, OK, and then we'll just go ahead and push that in. Uh, just stop that ear from sticking out ever so much. All right. So there's our new guy. And again, that's our before and after uh, left side of his face, not the right side of his face, but you would just rinse and repeat and do the other side. Okay, so another thing I wanted to show. Um, so let's swipe over. Uh, let's do two things here. Uh, same thing here where we've got the tattoo. If you want to remove an element from a photo, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, we'll just go in and we'll take our healing brush. And by the way, thanks for the hearts on Periscope. The hearts, as you know, keep the broadcast going. Uh, but we'll go to, just go in and paint this. And again, I can use the sketch side of that, just laying the pencil down a little bit more to get more coverage area, as opposed to more precision by leaning it up. And then again, once we do that, voila, no more tattoo. So... Um, I love <laughs> this environment, this doing this precision. This is awesome. And the speed of it. Uh, um, Photoshop Fix is rated right now to work with up to 30 megapixel files. Uh, so most cameras will be supported with 36 or 30 megapixel file size. It will do it will do more on the iPad Pro. 
Um, but we say 30 megapixels, that way we know everybody's covered. If you have a device that can run fix, uh, you should be able to accommodate a 30 megapixel file. If you have an iPad Pro, wink, wink, you can do more. All right, so I, I undid that. Now here's the one we usually have fun with. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> no, we're not going to make her look happy, but we're going to make him look happy. Uh, let's go in, and that's another inside joke, but let's go in and tap uh, liquefy. And again, we'll tap face. And in this case, uh, you can see it on the, you might be able to see it on the bigger screen, but the, now there's, there are dots on his eyes, on his nose, on his um, cheekbones, or right here, on his lip, and on his chin. Those dots, you can move around, and you can also use them with their sliders. So for example, if I tap the dot for the eye, I get size, tilt, height and width uh, if I go into height for example I can I'll tap it and then I can actually make the height of his eyes slightly adjusted if I go to size don't do this I'm just showing you what's possible but don't do it we can make his eyes really bug out or make them really small and again that's that's doing something that even Photoshop CC can't do yet that's uh, face detection in the liquify mode so the engineers uh, introduced it here first. All right, and if we go here uh, to the lips, the make him smile comment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a mount for that. The make him smile comment, uh, we'll do that now. So we'll tap on his smile and watch his lips. We'll just go ahead and tweak his smile, make him smile just a little bit more. Or we can make him not so happy. Or we can make him happier. Or we can make him not so happy. Or we can make him happy. And yes, I do have Archon mounts everywhere. Um, okay. So, uh, and I'm going to cancel out of that because this is the file I always use, so I'm not going to save it. Uh, but any of these changes that I've done can also be sent to work on further in Photoshop. If I'm done here, this is all I need to do, then I can share this, save it to my camera roll, save it to Creative Cloud, do whatever I want to do with it. But if I want to work on this when I get home, back to Photoshop, I can tap the share button and there is a send to Photoshop command. So once I tap send to Photoshop, what that will do, that's not the Grand Canyon, that's Antelope Canyon, uh, or actually that's Horseshoe Bend in the background. So that's Horseshoe Bend in the background in Arizona. Uh, but what it's doing right now is it saved it to the cloud. That will sync it with Photoshop on the desktop. It will sync it back down. And once that sync takes place, Photoshop will automatically open with that file intact. Uh, so if you, with, and with any layers that Photoshop Fix created. So if you wanted to work on it further, you got started while you were out and about, and here comes Photoshop, by the way. I, I didn't touch anything. My hands were here the whole time. Uh, Photoshop's launching, and we'll give it a second, and it will go ahead and launch with that file um, for it. Since I already have a Wacom, this is where I'd use it on my desktop Wacom still in business okay uh, so uh, let's see Photoshop is still opening okay here comes Photoshop I need a bigger budget too uh, and there's the image uh, complete with the edits or any edits that were saved let's see let's see if we can turn that layer on and off oh there were no edits that were saved because I flattened some stuff down. But anyway, had there been any layers that were saved, they would be there as well. And now I'd be able to continue uh, working on this image in Photoshop CC. So send it from the desktop to, uh, can I adjust the edits? Uh, yes and no. You can adjust the edits while you're in fix. While you're making edits, you can go back and make changes. But once you say okay, you're committing to that adjustment. So it is a destructive workflow, pretty much like Photoshop, uh, but in some cases it will create layers. In most cases it'll create layers. So that if you do take it into Photoshop, you can get rid of that layer or go back and make more adjustments. Um, and a lot of it, uh, a lot of times when you don't see a, a, like a long history or being able to go back, again, because we are limited to the RAM on the device. You gotta remember Photoshop didn't have multiple undos for years because there just wasn't enough memory to do it. Uh, now that there's enough memory to do it, of course, Photoshop can have multiple history states. Same thing now, we're, we're taking a step back in time where iPads or tablets don't have a ton of RAM. 
So we can, we're limited in how far back or how much stuff we can save in the file and be able to go back. All right, uh, so that was what I came to show you. Um, I want to show you uh, some of the pencil specific pressure sensitivity stuff. Uh, so let me go out of fix for a moment and let's go to an app that I normally don't play around with. I'm going to go take, oh, you can't see it. Hang on. Let's hide Photoshop for a, a moment. And, and here I'll get out of the app so you can see it. When I launch it again, there we go. All right, we'll hide Photoshop. We'll go back to QuickTime, and there we are. Okay, so back to the iPad. And what I want to do is I want to show you a little bit more of the pressure sensitivity of the uh, Apple Pencil. And hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm missing something over here. It also opened on my other computer too. Okay, so no, I don't want to do that. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, now we're back to you can see. Okay, so I want to show you some of the pressure sensitivity of the pencil. And to do that, I'm going to open up an app that already takes advantage of it from Adobe. It's Adobe Photoshop uh, <laughs> Adobe Photoshop uh, Sketch. So a launch sketch. I was playing around with the sketch uh, in honor of the Paris, uh, or just in honor of Paris in general. But let's go ahead and start a new one. So I'll start a new sketch. I'll tap the screen to bring up that canvas. And then that takes me right into the tools. Now again, Sketch has different brushes, different pencils, different tools, and they're all taking advantage now of Apple Pencil. So for example, and again, I can't draw. If you guys want to see someone draw, go watch Victoria's Scopes, go watch her Twitch. Uh, I'm, I'm a person who plays someone who can draw on TV. All right, so let's go ahead and tap. I can pick a color. Uh, I can use any color from the picker. I can use a color from my themes. I can use a color from my libraries. Uh, I, I created that library when I was down in Tampa with the Kelby One folks. Uh, let me go to my, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? My watch themes there. These are ones that were captured from my Apple Watch. So let's go ahead and just pick a color. How about that nice purple? And again, uh, if I just take this um, tool and I, I draw lightly, I get a light stroke. If I apply a little bit more pressure, I get a heavier stroke. So that's what we mean by pressure sensitivity. Now, if I take the size of the brush up, and again, I go lightly on the stroke, and then I go heavier on the stroke, I get the pressure sensitivity. So, and again, um, if I want to, uh, <laughs> I know I'm not releasing Bob Ross. There's no Bob Ross inside me, trust me. Uh, but if I want to go in, and what oh my camera went weird for a minute uh, if I want to use the the actual tip now uh, again I just lay it down a little bit more and notice now I can actually sketch uh, and create those kinds of strokes with it so again I can use the precision of the pencil or pressure sensitivity to get a bigger stroke or I can actually sketch now I, like I said I don't draw but what I love doing is playing around with the watercolor brushes that are built in. So what I'm going to do is um, I can uh, hit undo, 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 or with three fingers, I can hold down and swipe back in time. So your three fingers is history. You can go back and forth with three fingers held down in this app. Uh, so next thing we'll do, Periscope's doing weird things right now. And did I lose you guys? Are you still here? My Periscope screen is changing colors. This is weird. Chime in if you're still here. Someone leave a comment on Periscope. 